because I feel like this is definitely a community of people who is looking for personal inspiration as well as ideas for what to buy people in their lives. So, love it. I don't even want to pretend to know how many bookmarks I own. I saw this on Jordy's Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse and welcome to my version of the holiday gift guide for the book lover. So whether you are trying to find a gift for another book lover or someone is asking you what you want for the holidays and you are trying to think of some inspiration besides just this entire list of books that we are all craving, I thought I would put together some things that I love, maybe some suggestions, inspiration, all of those kinds of good things. So I do have some books to recommend in concept wait for it but let's just get into it we are about to hit cyber monday the sales are happening like all over the place so no better time than the present to take advantage of some deals and to get shopping so i saw this post on instagram and it was kind of like people complain that they never know what to get for a book lover and it was like we love books buy us books and i had thousand percent will never be bummed if I get a book. And I'm certainly also never bummed if I get a gift card to go buy myself a book. So those are definite options. Like if you know a specific book somebody wants or they have a wish list, or again, when in doubt, gift card, plenty of places that they can use them online or in store. So those are all great options. But beyond that, I thought, let's talk about, let's talk about accessories first. So every good book lover needs some bookmarks. I am a huge bookmark junkie. I don't even want to pretend to know how many bookmarks I own, but there's so many great places online. So first up, if you're traveling the Etsy route, my friend Amanda from The Curly Reader has a bookmark shop. So this is one of her fall bookmarks. She has all holiday bookmarks that are up now. She makes them at home. They're absolutely beautiful. They're laminated. These have quotes on them. So she does them seasonally. So many great options to choose from. So again, everything will be linked down below, but Amanda makes some beautiful bookmarks. Also totally affordable, great gifts for everybody, including yourself. I also have some bookmarks from Hey Atlas Creative. So they made bookmarks of a Riley Sager theme last year. So I bought the entire pack. <laughs> they have quotes from all of his books. And then there are just some other ones from different books, different inspirations. This one is a Stephen King quote. It says, she laughed at the stars, frightened but free, her terror as sharp as pain and as sweet and ripe as an apple. That's a quote from It. So again, these are just absolutely beautiful, well-made, so many different options. Hey Atlas Creative also has pins and like some notebooks and other accessories, so always a great place to shop. And then, I mean, when in doubt, like at your bookstore, I picked this up at Barnes & Noble a couple years ago. It's a Handmaid's Tale one. And then another one of my favorite places to shop is out of print. So obviously there are so many places you can pick up a bookmark, maybe your local bookstore, if you are on holiday somewhere. This is the Nancy Drew one, which I absolutely love, but I just feel like you can never have too many. And anyone who thinks, well, I'm just gonna read one book and I just need one bookmark, um, you're crazy, man. To quote old school, I have an entire jar of bookmarks. So bookmarks are always a great way to go. And then if you are someone who likes to meaningfully mark up your books and maybe you don't necessarily want a dog ear, I do both. I do both. I do not discriminate between dog earring. I used to be very big on underlining in my book. I don't do that as much anymore, but I also have gotten into the tabbing game. So not necessarily in an annotation way. I definitely don't annotate in a sense of like, this made me laugh, this made me cry, this was a clue. I just tab anything. And of course I'm like, why don't I have a book in front of me that I've tabbed up? Wait for it. You know why I won't? Because all the books I've read are in another room from this year. Okay, so here's Daisy Darker as an example. So I just tab up my books. If there is a line or something in it that I think is great, why can't I get to a page that has it? And these are just little post-it kind of light stickies. They're clear-ish, like they're colored, but they're not like real post-its, but they have the post-it stickiness to them. So I usually pick a color that maybe goes with the cover of the book. So I did blue for Daisy Darker. It has absolutely no significance. And every once in a while I'll like, end a color and then start a new one in a book. I'm not that, I'm high maintenance about some things, but this is not one of them. 
but you can get packets of these. They actually have kind of like these more muted colors, which I think I'm gonna go with next time. But as you can see, I'm always using these. I go through them like hotcakes. In my opinion, these are an affordable option. Another option that I purchased are the actual book darts. So these are a metal book dart. Can't even get the tin open. Okay, here we go. So I got them in this rose gold color. I can't even pick them up. So they're literally like these little darts and they slide onto the page. So I'll be honest, I find these to be fussy for me and I like to just be able to rip off the post-it and put it in the book. These are very beautiful. They definitely, I use them on the JC Dupree book that I read earlier this year and they look really, really pretty and I really, really like them, but they're not, they're not expensive, but they're not inexpensive. And again, I find them to be a bit fussy. And for someone who darts a lot of stuff or flags a lot of stuff, whatever we want to call it, this would become a very expensive habit for me. So there's definitely some options out there. I find this one to just be easier to use in the grand scheme because I'm also someone who will be in bed <laughs> that's on my nightstand and I'm like, let me just pull off a tab and put it in the book. So. It's saving me from dog earring. Dog earring was my entryway into marking, but it's definitely some easy ways to mark up a book, whether you do want to annotate, which is great. I just don't have that kind of brain to separate out stuff. So I just go with lines I love. And every once in a while, because you can write on these little post-its, which I think is great, I put like little stars. Let's see if that focuses. If it's a line that I like really love or want to come back to or maybe want to quote it in my review or something like that. So Daisy Darker had quite a few of those. Amazing. So a way to mark up your books. And then if you are to stick with the makes it easy when I'm reading in bed, you might need a book light. I feel like this doesn't show as well on camera. I will insert some footage of this. But the book light is the best thing I think I ever bought. It is rechargeable, it's an LED light. This one in particular has three different colors. So it has sort of like a regular LED, I would say, a blue and an orange tone, subtle, but it's sort of like, if you want a different color at night for your eyes, if you want a different color in the morning, depending on how dark the room is that you're in or where you are, if you're on a train or something like that, an airplane. And then each colorway has three different levels of low, medium, high. So you get nine different options. It's super lightweight. It just clips onto the book. I've used it in hardcovers and in paperbacks. And I just think it's the best thing ever. So I bought this one a couple years ago. It has a flexible arm on it. So you can do all the fun things and just have it maneuver around your book however you need it to. <laughs> Love this thing. And then if you guys have been here for a minute, you have seen probably in like my vlog footage, the book weight, which was also a game changer for me. So I will insert some footage of all of this stuff. I used to put my, like open my book and then I would lay my cell phone like face down in it to hold the book open. And somewhere along the way, I was like, somebody must have figured out a solution for this because this is nonsense. And sometimes I don't have my phone with me or it didn't totally work on a paperback. So I found this book weight and it has game changed. So I will use it if the book is laying flat and then sometimes I will use it even if I have the book propped up on my next thing to show you, which is, I don't even know what this is like technically called, book stand. It's kind of like a combination, again, I will put more video of me showing you how this thing works. So it, it's like a combination book stand. You can also use it for an iPad. It showed it using it with a laptop if you want to prop a laptop up, which I haven't tried because I don't even know how you would even begin to use the keyboard, but I've seen people do it. I just like my hands don't no, work that way, but it's super flexible. It's like a, I don't know if it's really bamboo or if it just looks like bamboo. It's a nice wood. I got this last year as a gift. So actually somebody had asked me what I wanted for the holiday and this is the thing that I suggested and I absolutely love it. I use it every day. I use it absolutely every day. So it has these little arms on it so you can put the book on, holds the pages open. Sometimes I will use the book weight as well to hold the pages open and it's lightweight, it folds up completely so if you're not using it it just kind of folds up kind of like a laptop super functional definitely i just think like a great investment and not a huge amount of money and it's changed my life as someone who reads a lot when i eat 
I just find it to be really, really helpful and anything to just be able to even be hands-free. So even just to sit at the table, because I don't always want to be in a chair or on the couch, just to even just sit on the table or sit at the table and have my book there is great. And then something that I don't actually have, but I've thought about, is some sort of like a lap desk or something. So I used to have a lap desk, but I didn't want my head completely down. So a lot of times when I'm reading on the couch or in a chair, I will just have a couple pillows and like have a book propped up on that. So lap desks are another one that are great because you can also use them for your iPad, probably even if you're using your laptop or something like that. But I find all these to be super helpful in making sure I can read whenever I possibly want to. <laughs> okay, so I did maneuver the camera a little bit for my next recommendation, which is a book cart. I'll put some other footage of this in also because I know that this is like super awkward. Let me see if I can just move us a little bit here. So if you know someone who maybe their shelves runneth over or maybe they are looking for a TBR card or they want to put, I don't know, all their historical fiction on a cart or whatever it is, a book cart is a great idea. So I had toyed with this for a long time and it was around this time last year where I was really debating, trying to decide, trying to figure out what to do. And I just, this one needs to be gone through. There's no rhyme or reason to this cart in that sense, but it's been a huge help for me because I can only have so many bookshelves. I am not complaining about the fact that I have a lot of windows, so I don't have a lot of places to put bookshelves all the time. And this has just helped. So I I think it's, I think it's great. So, <laughs> There's different colors. There's different places you can get them. I don't know how many books you can get on here. There's probably 40 books on here when I, that I'm looking at it, which feels absolutely insane. But obviously if you did paperbacks, you could get more and it's just been great. So my plan is to go through, I actually have two. There goes my text message again. I have two book carts and I need to go through them and actually organize them. So what I would love to do is put like, Dark Academia on one that I want to read and maybe these are kind of a mix of books I have and haven't read but anyway you could you could do anything you want with these and they're great like organize them however you want or just have it be completely randomness like mine is but a book cart is a great gift for somebody with a lot of books <laughs> it's all good it's all good here right so another thing the book lover in your life might love to do is track the books they read. So I have tried my darndest to become a digital person and it just it's just not me. I did invest in like an online tracking sheet. It's great, it's stats and like all this stuff. I just am such like a handwritten person when it comes to these kinds of things. So I wound up buying a new reading journal this year, which I was <laughs> just talking to Sarah about this. It was back ordered when I bought it, so I didn't wind up getting it to like the middle of February, and then I didn't use it right away. So I haven't totally used it, but I love it. So you can get different kinds of reading journals. So this is one, this is from Canista.co, and it has the best setup to it. I think I'm going to retrospectively go back and fill it in for this year so that I have it. And it has like pictures of the books that you can, I feel like this never shows up well. You can color in, you can list all the books you finished, your star ratings, and then it has a section for you to write reviews, comments, the dates you read it, your rating of it, quotes, anything you want to use or anything you want to write down. So I really started using this to help me with my reviews, to help when I'm making my wrap up videos for you guys. And also just to remember because we all read a lot of books and it's hard to remember all of the details sometimes. And I wanted to track a lot of that. And I found it really helpful. Again, if you guys have been here for a minute or if you're new here, welcome to my land. I've started to reread the Patricia Cornwell Case Carpetta series, conveniently located behind me every time I talk about it. So I started to write details from each book in the series, starting with number three, because that's where I started this year on my reread. And it's been so fascinating to track the time changes between books, characters that come and go, when real pivotal things are happening in the story. And sometimes there's my voice cracked. <laughs> sometimes there's references back to previous cases. So even though I've been reading them kind of back to back pretty much, 
it's been really interesting to track that trajectory and I'm so glad I started to do it because even in like book number nine, I have a note and don't worry, I'm not gonna tell you guys anything. It takes place five years after, hold on. Five years after book number six. And there's just something that comes up in that book that references back to it and to know the time difference and the relationships. And again, you've got characters that come in and out of the story. I just found it really interesting and really helpful. So I'm enjoying that. I just need to be more disciplined about it because this definitely takes more time and energy, obviously. So I originally just used a moleskin notebook when I first started. I've always just written down the books that I read and never did much more with it. So when I first started kind of getting a lot back into reading, maybe like five years ago, I just had a moleskin journal and started using it. And then I bought myself a new one a couple of years ago. This is one of their hardcover ones, which I really love. And it's just straight lines in it. So I have just done my own, I'm not a bullet journaler. I've just done my own lists, all the books that I've read. I did do a little coloring because I do love to color and have a little bit of fun with it. But I literally just handwrite the names of the books that I've read, the dates that I read them, if I got it from the library, if I own it, and maybe a couple little notes, like if it's part of a series or if there's something critical that happens, which I actually wrote in one of these books or in one of these comments. And then I also have space where I can just put in, I did so, like series September bingo and I just made my board here. I'm obviously doing book travert bingo and I will put my final card in here when I'm done with it. So I have a blank page left for me to put my final book trovert bingo. I should be able to say it, I created it in here. So this to me is just a super easy way to keep track of my stuff too. So if you have a book lover in your life who likes to track their stuff, some kind of notebook or journal, whether it's one from scratch or one that's pre-made is always a nice option, I think. <laughs> So let's get into some books ideas in general. So first things first, anyone who takes their books on the go with them might be interested in a book sleeve. So my other fabulous friend, Lindsay, also has an Etsy shop and she sells book sleeves for small and large, so like paperbacks and hardcovers. So again, let me find, let me, let me demonstrate. I use one of my favorite books here, They Never Learned by Lane Fargo. So if you are on the go and you don't want your book to get ruined, whether or not you leave the cover on and it just slides right in. Did you see that? <laughs> like I did it off camera so you couldn't see. So it just slides right in. Your book is protected, whether you just take it like this or you put this in your bag and it works great and I absolutely love it. So she's got tons of patterns. Lindsay also has some holiday ones. She's always having new seasonal things. She's <laughs> like a bit addicted to the fabric, which makes for great options for all of us. So this is great. And also I use it as a case for my iPad because it fits right in, it's the perfect size. So if I am on the go with my pad, even though it has like this like plastic back on it, I still feel like when I have it in a bag, I'm going somewhere, whether I am going on the train, which I don't really do anymore, or like just traveling somewhere for the day, I will put it in here for safekeeping and it's great. So multi-purpose, especially if you read books on your iPad or on a Kindle, I don't have a Kindle. I'm not a huge e-reader. I don't know what it is about it. Again, my voice keeps cracking today, but I don't, I feel like I don't do as well with an e-book. So usually I'm doing audiobooks for my library, but if you were really looking to go bonkers, although I feel like there's always deals this time of year, obviously the iPad is not meant to be an e-reader, but you can get the Kindle app on here. This is how I read my NetGalley books. And if I do get an e-book from the library, both my library apps are on here, but I know Kindles are obviously a huge thing. I don't have one, so I can't speak to them, but I have friends who have them and they absolutely love them and find them to be game changers. So definitely an option, but let's get into some physical books. And like I said, I'm not gonna make specific book recommendations because I feel like that is fairly subjective for a lot of people, <laughs> but conceptually, I thought I would just make some suggestions. So like I said at the beginning, if there's a specific book you know somebody wants, then like no brainer, easy to go. But if you're not quite sure or you wanna do something maybe a little bit different, I think there's a couple options. So for one, I love covers of books. I am a cover buyer. I definitely am motivated by the cover. 
and I will a thousand percent do a book depository or Waterstone scroll to see what the UK covers look like. And I often buy the UK cover because I think it's better. So, or I like it more. I shouldn't say I think it's better. Sometimes I like it more. And in this case, so Daisy Darker, which I showed you guys before, I got this from the UK and I absolutely love it. This was like a crazy special edition that they had and I just absolutely love it. So there's even a different UK cover that has daisies on it, which I originally was gonna get, but then this wound up being the new special edition, so I'm not mad about it at all. But I also picked up, if you guys have been here, you've seen, when I was repurchasing the Case Carpetta series, these are the UK large paperbacks. So I originally had mass market US paperbacks, and let's be honest, these are just way more beautiful. And I also just love a bigger book. Mass market paperbacks and I do not get along, so this is actually like a great option. Another book I picked up recently from Book Depository is The Family Game by Katherine Stedman. So this was a case, and I've had this happen quite a few times, which I'm not mad about, is a book that came out here in hardcover, came out there in a paperback, and was significantly less money, so I'm always down for a deal. This was $8 when I bought it. I think it might be $10 right now. I also got another book last year, and I know it has a different name, and I'm blanking on it, but I got that for less, and then actually, I haven't shown you guys this yet. Okay, so I recently picked up a couple more books from Book Depository. Like, picked up, I mean, <laughs> you know. But I mentioned in a previous video that I was starting to get a whole bunch of recommendations from Gare, from Gare Indeed Reads. Uh, I will include his link down below. I think I kind of mumbled through his name last time, but he also has a podcast with Kate from A Girl With A Book called Killing The Tea. I'll put it all down below because I think I mumble. But I have been getting a lot of inspiration from the two of them, so it's a thriller crime podcast. So inspired to pick up books that I already have on my shelf and pick up some new to me authors. And one of those authors is Jamie Lynn Hendricks. So I was checking out her stuff and they were talking about her two books and it is Finding Tessa and It Could Be Anyone. So Finding Tessa came out in 2021, It Could Be Anyone came out this year. And when I was searching her, I was like, why are they not talking about her other two books, Her Husband's Murder and His Missing Wife? Like she has four books out, I don't understand why they're not talking about her. Well, it turns out that these are the UK editions of her US books because they just have different names to them and they're the exact same book. And when I was doing some browsing, Book Depository had this ridiculous sale and like one of them was $5 and the other one was eight. <laughs> I was like, yes, please. So I picked them both up. They just came the other day, so I haven't read them yet, but I'm super excited. So I feel like you never know what you might find when you're looking online. And then along those very same lines, believe it or not, some books are published there before they're published here and vice versa. So I picked up Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone by Benjamin Stevenson. I saw this on Jordy's Book Club on Instagram and he had an arc of it, loved it, raved about it. This comes out in January in the US and I, again, like looked it up and was curious because at the time I didn't know when it was coming out and I saw that it had already come out in the UK. So I was like, boop, 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 boop. And I bought it and this also just came the other day. So I'm really excited. You just never know what might come out sooner there than here. And I'm just like such a compulsive need to just have the dang book. But if there's something that maybe someone in, in your circle is excited about or looking forward to, maybe it came out already. So like the Anthony Horowitz books came out earlier there. I want to say, I want to say even Daisy Darker came out earlier. So books definitely, they might be like earlier by a week or they might be earlier by a few months. I want to say this came out in September over in the UK. So you never know, but maybe you can score somebody like a bit of an early get on a book, which how fun is that? And then another thing that might be fun, if you have someone who is maybe trying to build a collection or replace some books that they had old, crummy, <laughs> mass market paperbacks of and we're looking for something new i have also found a ton of luck on better world books and thrift books finding hardcovers or even just non mass market paperbacks of books that i loved back in the 90s so i showed this book a while ago whenever i got it which i haven't reread it yet but i will i will i will i will but this book came out in 1996 and this is a mystery thriller dual timelines You've got, this is like very much legal thriller. 
and I loved this. And I have been holding on to the mass market paperback of this for years, years. We can all do the math. It came out in 1996. And I was looking to just sort of, like I say, replace some of these books that I have because I'm like, I do want to read this again. Ew, I don't want to read this mass market paperback. And I found this for like, I don't know, $5 maybe. And it's in great condition. You guys have seen me talk about thrifted books. Like, yes, there's like a little bit of a bend on the bottom here, but you might be able to find some older books or some rarer books that maybe are harder to find just in general these days. And a great way to shop, obviously, in a secondhand way and repurposing books and doing a good thing, <laughs> which always makes me feel good. But I was amazed at what I could find. I was able to get The Butcher by Jennifer Hillier that way. I have a hardcover of that. So my collection of her books is absolutely complete. So you just never know what you might find. And I really just have gone down a lot of rabbit holes. I got the original hardcover of The Secret History that way. So you could put books on hold, or not on hold, you can get notifications when books are coming up. So I realize this might be a little bit more time sensitive, but definitely a place to look if you're looking for a specific book that maybe is harder to get from a regular store, for lack of a better word. And then my last set of books from an idea of suggestions is maybe get a special edition of a book for somebody. So maybe it's a book or an author or someone that they like absolutely love and maybe you can get an autographed version of the book. So this, I didn't meet Dave Grohl, this was autographed when I bought it, but I just absolutely love it. This is one of the best books that I read in 2021. I actually read this Thanksgiving weekend last year. I specifically remember going to Barnes and Noble that weekend in the chaos to pick up this book because I knew that they had autographed copies of it and I just love it. And I feel like autographed copies of books sometimes are something that make it a little bit more special and somebody might cherish it or if it's like I say, somebody that they really love or a book that they really love. And then when we get into like the actual special editions of books. So this is Vicious and Vengeful by V.E. Schwab. These are the UK covers, special editions of these books. They are so beautiful as I let the cover <laughs> flap all over the heavens but it has this gold embossing on the front, has gold on the side, it has a built-in bookmark in it, a little ribbon bookmark. I haven't read this one yet, so you can hear the, just like opening it. It has these beautiful end papers in it. So again, maybe there's a book that someone loves or somebody is eyeing and you can pick up a special edition of that book for them. Looks beautiful on the shelf, amazing to read. So I have this duology, which I need to reread Vicious, read Vengeful, that's not why you're here, but just so in case anybody woes, knows, woes, cares. I also picked up the special edition of The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue when it came out in the UK. So I know different editions might not be available at this stage, but this was another one just absolutely stunning. And if you search, oh, this also has this on the cover, just gorgeous. If you search special editions a lot of time or Google special editions of books, you can find different information on them. This one is illustrated on the inside. It's, this was also autographed, has an added end paper in it. It's not called an end paper. You guys know what I mean. But this is all part of the beautiful collection. And then I also picked up the original five year anniversary of If We Were Villains. So I have my original paperback here. And then this came out. There's a newer illustrated version of this, which I fully debated buying and have managed to talk myself out of. But this also has black painted edges. This has beautiful end papers in it. The cover itself is not super exciting. It's just a beautiful orange, beautiful end papers. Another one of my all time favorite books. I would not do this for any old book. So like obviously my recommendations are books that are very special to people. So another all time favorite. I got this beautiful version of Murder on the Orient Express, one of my favorite Agatha Christie books. This has deckled edges, which I love. I think it makes the books look so much cooler and fancier. Beautiful end papers in this one as well. And this one is still out and about. I just love it. I just think it's absolutely beautiful. And I remember reading this book in high school and just loved it. So I feel like they're reissuing not all the covers like this, but reissuing all the paperback covers of Agatha Christie. And then I have The Great Gatsby. So my friend Amanda of The Curly Reader, she of the bookmarks, gave me this for my birthday. No, she gave me this, I think when I reached 5,000 subscribers. And this is one of my favorite books. And again, absolutely beautiful. All the stuff's on the inside. <laughs> 
beautiful end papers. It's got the gold foil on the edge. It's just all gold and quoted on the back. I love this book. I loved this book when I read it the first time. I've read it a few times at this stage and I just think it's absolutely beautiful and it looks beautiful on the shelf and it just, I don't know, I just absolutely love it so, so much. So, and it's a nice little hardcover, like physically small hardcover. And then the last one I have is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. This was the 30th anniversary edition. So again, books that have special editions that are out there, beautiful end papers. I think you can still get this um, maybe at Book Depository. That's where I got it. I had pre-ordered this when it came out. It also has the ribbon bookmark in it. So I just, this is one of my all time favorite books as well. So like I said, I thrifted the original hardcover like a year ago and I still have my original mass market paperback and I just love it. I just couldn't pass it up. So sometimes you've got books that change your life that are really important to you, authors that you love, collections that you have. So I think a great gift is a special edition of a book that maybe somebody wouldn't indulge in on their own or would think maybe that feels a little bit frivolous for me to buy. So what a great way to give a book lover a book with like a little extra zhuzh to it. So that's gonna do it for my list of gift ideas, but definitely include your ideas down below because I'm always looking for inspiration. I'm sure everybody else here is as well. And I always love to hear what other people love or get for book people or what you have maybe in like an accessories way that really works for you. So on that note, I hope everyone has a great chaotic free Cyber Monday if that's possible if you guys are actually shopping and if you're not shopping and you just came to watch the video and hang out thank you so much for being here thanks to everybody for being here I feel like we have officially reached that time of year where it's like mad chaos ensues and then it's like boom it's New Year's and we don't know where the time has gone so I feel a lot of pressure this time of year if you guys feel the same way I am trying to approach it with calm <laughs> with grace with just not feeding into the insanity, which is sometimes easier said than done. But I hope everyone is doing well. Take care of yourselves, you guys. And I really appreciate everybody being here. So thank you so, so much. And I'll see you guys in another video really soon. So bye, everybody.